Today, Bree and I are out milking Flopsy, our Nubian goat, and we wanted to talk to you about our experience with cows and goats as dairy animals for small homesteads, and just talk to you about some of the advantages and disadvantages and things we like and don't like about them. So we're going to share some of the things that we've learned with you today. Flopsy is not our first goat that we've had in milk. We had three goats that we milked last year, two Nigerians and one Nubian. They were trained to the milk stand already. They were trained to stand to milk, I should say. Um, so we are definitely learning something new with this lady. She's standing a lot stiller today. She tends to stand more still for me. I think this is such a complicated question because it's gonna depend on so many factors. It's gonna depend on the breed of goat and cow that you have, and it's gonna depend on your property, your fencing situation, and just even personal preference. One thing I love about goats is their personalities. I feel like I have a relationship with my goats, and that actually, when I first got goats, totally surprised me. I had no idea how much I was going to love my goats. One great thing about goats is they are amazing brush clearers. I don't really have to say that for most of you, but they will knock brush down. And that's a huge thing that they'll do that cows will not do. Another positive with goats that you will not get with a cow is ease of manageability, meaning their size. So handling goats, in my opinion, is a lot easier. Even a wily goat like this um, is a lot easier than managing a cow. You can just put a collar on a goat and lead them around wherever you want them to go. Another advantage of goats that kind of falls right in line with that one is it's really easy, or it has been easy for us, to find and transport a yeah. buck for breeding. If you don't want to keep your own buck, you can go pick up a buck in your car, if you don't mind the smell, <laughs> or in a, in a big crate and transport it to your place. There's a lot of bucks out there. A lot of people are willing to lend them to you, and so that just makes it really easy to get your animals bred. Something I love about the goats is I love their babies. <laughs> They're just so much fun. Right now these little guys are over here playing while we're milking and just so sweet. They're easy to handle. You can hold them. Kids can play with them. Easy to sell. They're easy to sell. And we haven't sold any cows yet. For all I know, cows are just as easy to sell. I'm sure it depends on location though. Some of the negatives with goats, at least dairy goats specifically, is they are just way more prone to parasites depending on your situation. So we don't have a ton of brush, we don't have a ton of brows. We mostly put our goats on grass, though we do use them to clear also. And because of that, they have a tendency more towards parasites than cows do. So you really have to watch your goats. I look at my goats eyes every day. I look at their body condition every day and just really pay attention to how they're doing. And to me, that has, that is the number one thing with goats because goats, at least from my experience and from the experience that I have with all the people I know that have goats and cows, goats tend to die a lot more and get sick a lot more. We've never had a goat die from worms, but we've had goats get really wormy over and over. And you could say, you know, our, our management practices aren't perfect, we're not rotating them all the time, and that's true. But the fact is, most people aren't going to rotate goats all the no, time. So if, all. if you want to totally, um, naturally manage your animals, goats are, are pretty finicky on, on the health side, specifically with parasites. But goats die from parasites, period. Especially dairy goats, especially. That's what I'm, at least that's what I'm finding in my research and with talking to dozens of people um, about this very specific topic Are you of done, goat health. I am done. Another disadvantage to goats is you have to have really good fencing. Um, that can be time consuming 
and very expensive. So a cow, you can keep in if it's trained with like one strand of electric. And a goat, you need serious uh, four, is it four by four welded wire fencing if it's a permanent fence or you're gonna need um, a serious electric goat fence. And even then, if you're not careful, if they're not happy where they are, they'll get out of it. Ghosts can also be very destructive if they do escape because they love eating plants and your neighbor's ornamental plants may be the plants that they <laughs> come across and they will just gobble them. Thankfully, thankfully that has not happened to us yet. One advantage to goat's milk is that many people are allergic to cow's milk, even raw cow's milk, even something called A2, A2 cow's milk. There's people that can't drink that, but they can drink goat's milk. And so that's a huge advantage. If you love milk, but you are allergic to cow's milk, keeping a goat may just be the perfect solution for you. A disadvantage though to goat smoke could be that it's just not sufficient quantity for your family. Um, that's what we found, that even higher producing goats don't produce nearly as much as one cow. So another um, disadvantage to goat smoke is that it naturally is homogenized, which means the cream doesn't separate unless you have a very special machine and even then it's not that much cream so you don't get to make butter butter is a really big deal at least to us two more disadvantages to goats are one that we listed as an advantage which is they eat brush the problem with goats is that they actually eat all the brush unless you have large amounts they will knock it all out in in a matter of days and then what do they eat next Another disadvantage of goats is they tend to be really finicky. At least the dairy goats we've had, they hate the rain, they don't like cold weather, they want a shelter, um, and so they don't do as well as a cow just out in, uh, in the pasture. We have our portable fence in the new location, so everyone has lots of fresh grass to eat. There are a lot of advantages and disadvantages to a cow. Um, one huge advantage, depending on the breed, is that you can completely grass feed a cow. Now, we are not completely grass feeding our cow because she doesn't have the genetics for that. She would lose too much of her body weight while she's in lactation. But there are plenty of breeds, and there's even um, jerseys that have been bred to be purely grass. Dexter's, American Milking Devons, that's two breeds that you can raise completely on grass, no grain. Why does that even matter? Well, it's cheaper, it's less expensive. Um, we use a very, very nice, very expensive grain to keep up Dolly's body weight. And I think in the end, eventually, we'll move towards um, either a Jersey, like Dolly, that has the genetics of a grass-fed cow, or a different breed of cow that does really well on just grass. Another advantage of cows is that compared to goats, they have less health problems. They tend to be really healthy if you give them what they need and do really well. Another advantage is they're tough. You can leave a cow out in almost any weather. If it's just brutally cold and snowing, raining, you want them to have some shelter, but they can stay out in almost any weather and be healthy out there in that weather. Look at that magnificent giant udder. And although this udder is quite lovely, it is obviously much smaller and therefore holds a significantly less amount of milk. So that's another advantage to a cow, especially a high producing dairy, uh, dairy cow, which our cow is. Um, she's a Jersey, so she's considered a high producing breed. You just get so much more milk. And the advantage of that is that you can do a lot more with that milk. So you can make cheeses and yogurts and butter um, for your family. But another thing you can do, which is something that we are currently learning about and not actually doing, is you can feed your farm animals from the leftover from processing your milk, like the whey and the skim milk. Feed your pigs and your chickens and um, significantly reduce the cost of feed that you're bringing in to your farm or homestead. So another huge advantage that is running away, probably because of what I'm about to say, 
But a huge advantage to a cow is that she produces beef for you. Obviously you can eat goats, though at this point we have no intention of eating our goats just because we've formed such a bond with them. I'm not saying it's never going to happen, but and once again we're looking at quantity here. Um, brownie is going to provide a whole lot more meat for our family than a small uh, buckling or weather goat would. And his mama is raising him for us, so we pay not, we've had to pay nothing for him. He's basically going to be free beef for us for a year once it's time to take him to be butchered. So we're going to talk for a second about space. How much space do you need to raise a cow versus goats? Um, this is a very difficult question to get into and the reason is because it depends so much on your management practices, the quality of your pasture or browse for your goats or cow, depends on how much rain you get every year. There are just so many factors. So numbers are kind of hard to tell you because I know people who raise goats in their backyard and they have a fenced in backyard, they never rotate, they, you know, they bring in all the feed for their animals all year and that's, you know, that's just how they've chosen to raise their animals. Then there's people like us who have, you know, six acres or so of various types of browse or grass and because we want to bring in as little feed as possible, we are, that's how much we need to keep our animals happy and healthy. Then you have to think about, um, I don't actually know anyone that does this, but I've seen it and I've read about it. People who keep cows just also in a paddock and um, they don't rotate and they feed them hay most of the year, if not all of the year. So those are all factors you have to consider. And then another factor you have to consider is winter feed. So if we wanted to provide our own feed all year round, we would need hay fields, which we do not currently have. So we have to buy all of our hay in the winter, um, which can be expensive, but now that we're buying round bells is way more affordable. Lovely. <laughs> A few disadvantages of cows for for the novice homesteader or for those of us who just have one or two animals is we probably aren't gonna have all the equipment we need to easily transport them and move them. Plus, if you wanna have a dairy cow, you need a bowl or you have to find an AI tech who is proficient and in your area who can come out. So breeding them is a little harder. They may have less health problems, but when they have health problems, it is a, more of a challenge to deal with just because of their sheer size. If you have a cow that's down, and you have to put it on its feet. How do you stand it up onto its feet if it weighs a thousand pounds? Some people actually might consider a cow's size, how much pasture and feed it needs, and how much milk it produces as a disadvantage, just because they don't need that much production, meat and milk, and they don't have that much space or don't want to buy that much hay. Another potential disadvantage of a cow is they can be more dangerous. Um, even accidentally stepping on you, walking, bumping you into something, those risks are actually really low if you don't have an aggressive animal and you're cautious at sometimes when they can be aggressive like right after they calve. The one more disadvantage I can think of of cows or weakness is that if you have an animal die and get sick, it, was, it may have been your only animal and it's a huge loss and a huge expense. We should talk about manure for one minute. Show the piles. Cows produce a huge amount of manure. It can be really messy, which is an advantage and a disadvantage. And goats don't produce as much, but it's really clean and Very pretty easy. easy to clean up and manage in your barn. Yeah, goat, man goat pellets are so easy to keep clean compared to cow pellets in the barn. However, once again, this is it's just like what your preference is. Like, you may love the gigantic piles Look at this goat nibbling on my belly. <laughs> they eat everything. <laughs> you may absolutely love the gigantic piles of manure that you have to deal with in your barn with your milk cow. Um, I don't personally love that part because I don't know, the goats are just so much easier to clean up after. But the amount of manure that you get to compost is also such an advantage. So once again, it's like just your own personal decision on what you want to deal with with your farm animals. What do you think, Bree? 
cows or cows or goats. I just think it's such a personal thing. It depends on how much land you have. It depends on how much work you're willing to do. It depends on your fencing situation. As far as ease, though, I think cows are easier. Um, However, goats for me provide something that the cow doesn't provide, which I just think goats are more fun. I agree that it's a personal decision that needs to match the, the needs you have and the space that you have, but there are some things that are just black and white. In my view, goats will require more care over the years than a cow. Cows are going to eat more and they're going to cost more to feed, but they produce more. I personally think that cows are kind of a better dairy animal overall but you'll miss out on the cuteness of goats yeah goats are just goats are so much fun they're just so much fun thank you all for joining us for this video hopefully this helps some of you out in making decisions for the future or maybe you just learned something this has been another great day on the homestead and we'll see you next video